It's an interesting abstract. Um, so to be fair, this is a preclinical abstract looking at a BCMA-directed uh, bispecific T-cell engager. For short, that's called a bite. Um, I want to put some context on this in the sense that um, BCMA-targeted therapies are quite numerous in the field at the moment. Uh, my last review of this had more than 20 different therapeutic options targeting BCMA. Um, this is important in the sense that there are multiple ways of getting after cells now from an immunotherapy standpoint. So targeting BCMA you know, uh, ranges from things such as a monoclonal antibody as far into the other side of that with the CAR T cell. And I think of this as a continuum uh, based on how to stimulate or stoke the patient's immune system to uh, recognize their malignancy yet again and get after it. Uh, monoclonal antibodies are things that are traditionally thought of to either directly cause apoptosis or to recruit other T cells, so the antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Whereas CAR T cells takes that a step farther, in which you basically put on uh, one half of an antibody uh, to a CAR T cell genetically with your genetic manipulation and tell it to go after the CAR T cell, sorry, after the cancer cell without having to have an antibody done to recognize it in the first place. Sandwich in between there is where I think that these bites come into play. So uh, as a bispecific T-cell engager, it's basically a uh, more traditional uh, antibody type of structure, though it doesn't have to be. Uh, but basically, one half of the antibody recognizes the cancer, and the other half recognizes T-cells. The overall theory and thinking is that this causes T-cells to localize to the cancer site uh, more readily uh, and also concurrently turns the cell on. Uh, a very contemporary example would be that of blinitumumab, which is a CD19 bispecific T-cell engager, a bite, that works quite well and is approved for the treatment of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL for short. There are multiple studies in uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma where blinitumumab has a very clear activity level as well, but how best to use it in the lymphoma space is still something that's being investigated at this point in time. Now, as a proof of concept, it demonstrated that this is something that can be applied to more than just leukemia, and so hence that's why the field has moved toward looking at uh, other ways of getting the immune system in on the act of uh, trying to kill cancer cells. So hence the BCMA-targeted uh, bispecific T-cell engagers are coming about. Now, much like it is with CAR T-cells, there are multiple constructs with which you can manipulate a bispecific T-cell engager or a bite where you don't have to maintain the, the traditional uh, antibody structure. You can just have the, the binding uh, uh, parts of the antibody rather than the full Y structure, if you will. Or you could uh, take the approach of, for example, um, the JNJ4528, which is a uh, uh, CAR T cell that has two binding domains uh, to BCMA on the outside of the cell. So in this case uh, with uh, S198, this uh, bispecific T cell engager, which doesn't actually have a name yet, um, uh, being produced uh, by Celgene, uh, has two binding domains uh, to uh, BCMA. And even though it's a preclinical study, it has very clear activity levels. Uh, and is uh, just an example that I wanted to bring about that there are more than just monoclonal antibodies in CAR T cells that are coming through the BCMA fight. Um, and in this case, what they tested in the preclinical setting was multiple different uh, myeloma cell lines of which they include fairly traditional ones, um, uh, such as uh, RBMI8226, but also uh, those that are proteasome inhibitor uh, uh, resistant, so something called KMS12, uh, which is a proteasome inhibitor uh, resistant cell line. And no matter what uh, dose of concentration they tried with their, uh, with their uh, bispecific T-cell engager mixed with T-cells, so they were able to find uh, some efficacy. And that's part of the reason why this um, product is now going into clinical trial. Um, while this is by no means the only uh, bispecific uh, that is out there for targeting BCMA, it's something that I want to point out that a lot of the preclinical uh, studies now are able to make the leap into a clinical translation very quickly based off of uh, just a proof of concept. Um, so in fact, uh, the bispecific field is now getting complicated targeting BCMA as there are multiple players involved. Um, Amgen had a, a, a construct uh, that they had theirs uh, that uh, required a continuous infusion. Um, presently, uh, multiple others, so, such as Janssen and uh, Pfizer, have uh, bispecifics now uh, uh, also in investigation. Uh, and to that point as well, while much of this has been intravenous, it's interesting to see that a lot of these clinical trials are now moving to a subcutaneous formulation. Um, this is obviously quite different from that of CAR T cells, which are obviously intravenous based, and monoclonal antibodies, which are, start off IV, but then eventually uh, multiple have uh, gone to towards subcutaneous administration, such as both daratumumab and rituximab. So, the sandwich between those two different modalities, I look at bispecific T cell engagers as something that, that fits in between and potentially could borrow uh, from the best of both worlds approach. 
Um, bites have potentially been a little bit more um, active uh, clinically in the myeloma space compared to that of CAR T cells to date. Um, that's not to take away from CAR T cells as the, the rate of development has been quite slow there and is slowly taking off right now. Uh, but uh, I think it's to say that uh, we shouldn't ignore one treatment modality over another, that they all likely have some uh, place within the overall treatment uh, um, uh, pecking order uh, for patients, depending on the, the clinical context as well as what they've received. An example of this would be in the leukemia and lymphoma space yet again that was recently presented at ASH, uh, where the CD20 bispecific antibody was quite active uh, in patients that relapsed after CD19-directed CAR T-cell therapy. So uh, stay tuned and uh, pay attention as uh, these bispecifics uh, will likely have uh, some interesting data to, to, to show uh, in the very near future.